Hi there, I'm Trevor and welcome to TH Terrain and Painting. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make some wargaming hills for your tabletop. Okay, These are simple polystyrene shapes painted and also with a little bit of texture added to them by adding some flock. They're very easy to make and very fast to make and you get them on your tabletop in no time whatsoever. Okay? They're all scaled for roughly 28 mil. They're also quite small, but that's because I'm more dealing with the skills and techniques needed to make them than the actual sizes. So when you're ready, get your tools and let's get to work. In this tutorial, I'm going to make a range of hill in various shapes and sizes from this sheet of polystyrene. The tools I'm going to need are a marker pen, a small craft knife, some sanding blocks, sand, multi-purpose filler, PVA glue, and last but not least, some paint and some paint brushes. The first thing I'm going to do is take the marker pen and on the sheet of polystyrene draw a rough shape to represent the hill. Then approximately in the centre draw a smaller version of your shape. This will come the top of the hill and here to here will be the slope of the hill. As I'm going to show different ways to make a hill, I'll be drawing more than one shape. These are just nice and easy freeform shapes, nothing fancy. The game system you are playing may have guides on what size of hill you need to make, but for this tutorial, I'm not going to worry too much about the size of the hills. Using the craft knife, roughly cut around the shape. Don't worry about cutting it exactly, that will be fixed soon enough. As cutting polystyrene can be very messy, try to work in an area where it can easily be cleaned up. So if like me you have a significant other and you won't get into trouble. Now that the rough shape is free from the rest of the shape, I can shave it down to the marker outline. Make sure your knife is long enough to cut the whole way through the polystyrene. Obviously, the cutting could be achieved a lot easier, faster and cleaner if I were to use a hot wire cutter. But that fun activity is for another video. As this video is an easy tutorial that everyone can do from home, most of the tools I'm using are from my local discount store. So now we have the basic shape cut out, it's time to make the hill. Using the knife, carve from the bottom of the hill here to the top of the hill here. As you can see, I'm just carving the polystyrene away to create a rough shape. Don't worry too much about lumpy or rough bits as it will be getting sanded smooth soon. The great thing about making hills like this is there are no mistakes as you can easily cut or sand them away. To avoid getting an unsightly step on your hill, I would suggest you get as close to the base as you can with your cuts. The steepness of the slope is determined by how much you cut away from the base to the top of the hill. When you make your own hill, you can decide what shape you want to create and its steepness. You will notice as I'm cutting that I'm creating areas of my hill that are more shallow and others that are more steep. Like nature, hills are not symmetrical, so don't get obsessed about making things look perfect. As you can see, this is a very basic hill shape. It's roughly carved out and looking very messy. For the next stage, I'm going to sand the hill. I have two types of sanding block, both available for my local discount store. One of them has open sides with a soft sponge core and the other one is more rigid. Either are suitable for the task. For this stage, I'm going to use the rigid one. Polystyrene sands very well, but is incredibly messy. So I would really recommend it doing this in an area where you can easily clean up or even better, do it outdoors. As you can see, I've created quite a smooth texture. As sanding polystyrene isn't exactly exciting to watch, I'll be back with you in a moment. 
I have sanded down a few of the hill pieces. As you can see, they're all quite smooth with varying degrees of steepness. This one is quite a steep hill and this one is quite shallow. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use this one. The easiest technique is just to paint it with a suitable colour. Firstly, to protect my work surface, I'm going to put down some paper. I've chosen a nice sap green shade of acrylic paint. I'm going to load my palette with my chosen colour and give the hill a good coat of paint. When deciding on a train project, you'll need to choose the appropriate colour scheme for your tabletop. It could be red for a Martian landscape or it could be yellow for a barren desert. Let's speed this up a bit so you don't have to see how badly I'm covering my fingers in green paint. Now that it's completely covered in paint, I'm going to leave it to dry and then I'm going to give it a second coat of paint. And here is the completed hill. It's a very basic hill but perfectly usable and you can put it on your tabletop right away. If you need to make some hills in a hurry, this is the perfect solution. The second hill is another easy one to make. Building on the work I've already done, I'm going to paint this piece brown, add some flock to the top of it to create a nice grassy hill. Like the first hill, I'm going to give this one a quick coat of paint, making sure the paint gets into all those little divots and holes that may have appeared in the polystyrene after it was cut and sanded. This will take a minute or two, so I'll just fast forward and sorry for moving the piece away from the camera. Once you've given your hill a good coat of paint and made sure there's no white showing through, leave it to dry. If the polished iron is still showing through in places, give it a second coat of paint. Now that the paint on the brown hill is dry, we're ready to add the flock. I'm going to use some Java's flock. It's the mid-green colour from their Premier Turf range. As I find it awkward to work with the bag, I'm going to decant a portion of the flock into a plastic container for ease of use. Now that it's out of the bag, you can get a better look at the texture and colour. As for the glue, I'm using a diluted solution of equal parts PVA glue and water at a 50-50 mix to make it a bit thinner and easier to paint onto the hill. I would also recommend using a piece of card or paper big enough to cover the footprint of the model. This will catch any excess flock and make cleaning up a lot more easier. Using a paintbrush, paint the PVA glue onto the hill. For this tutorial, I'll do one side of the hill completely covered in grass and on the other side, I'll do a rough stippling effect to create areas of patchy grass. As you can see, there are some dry areas where the flock will not adhere to. Now that I've got the glue on, I can either sprinkle onto the hill, or what I find easier to do is just to pour it over the piece by gently tapping the container with your finger to gently dislodge the flock. Like normal grass, any patches or open areas will look completely natural. Make sure you give the hill a good cover of flock, not worrying about any excess, as this will be caught by the piece of paper. Once the hill is significantly covered, give it time to dry. Drying time will vary depending on the glue and the room conditions. It's been a few hours and the glue is now dry. Now it's time to remove the excess flock. On this occasion, I'm going to pick it up, turn it over, give it a gentle tap to dislodge any loose flock. You could also use a paintbrush to gently remove any remaining bit. 
and here it is as you can see one side has a solid grass covering and the other side you can see where I use the stippling technique that give it a more patchy effect. I poured out a lot of flock to cover my model but only a small amount actually stuck to it. Let me clear up the flock so we can get a good look at the hill. Handy clean up tip. With your container close at hand Tip all the excess flock into the middle of your paper. Having the fold down the centre really does make it easier. Then carefully pour all the remaining grass back into your container. No fuss, no mess. Back to the completed hill. As you can see, I have a lot of flock on here and not so much here. This hill is just a step up from the previous one and is now ready for your chosen tabletop. I hope you've enjoyed watching this hill tutorial and have learned some new skills to help you build your own terrain. For more advanced techniques in hill making then please check out my other videos. If you have any suggestions on what tutorials you'd like to see next then please let me know in the comments below. Please like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos are uploaded. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video.